Gerald Tate's here. He wants to know what's happening to his deal. Go get Harvey. Trust me, I can handle Gerald Tate. You wanted to see me? Yes, Gary, please come in. Mike, this is Gary Lipsky. Gary's one of our most promising associates from last year. Hi. <laughs> Gary, Ms. Pearson wanted me to ask, have you completed the Petrenko filing? Oh, well, my brother was in over the weekend, so I didn't really get to it. Oh, Gary, come on, this is like the third time I've had to ask. I'll get right on it. Well, don't bother, you're fired. What? Y you can't fire oh, me. Oh, yes, I can. And I just did. Go pack up your things. Don't you ever show your face in this place again. Oh, but we know at this firm that we don't dwell on our colleagues' mistakes, right? <laughs> I mean, just because one of your fellow associates is incompetent doesn't mean you have to constantly remind us more of what a careless idiot he really is, right? <laughs> hey, you're not getting one of my ties. No. Your shoulder? What? Your lapel? Donna? <laughs> Norma is going to Istanbul for two weeks, and you know that I'm not good with temps. God, ask me for something else. Harvey, this is non-negotiable. You owe me now. Oh, when I take this public, you're gonna be disgraced. Your wife, your children, your whole family disgraced. Would you show my clients and, respect? And that transaction had nothing to do with the firm. Bullshit. You either took your cut from Maslow or it was hush money. Either way, you're gonna live the rest of your life as a pariah or you give up Maslow now. Is this a deposition or an inquisition? This is ridiculous. I can show you the records. Oh, sure you can because you're the guy who invented losses in mortgage-backed securities when you never even bought them. I had no part in that. But you were aware of it, and you did nothing about it. Come on, Lewis. Can I get a glass of water, please? You can't get any water. We don't have any. You can give up Maslow now, and this all stops. All right, all right. My client needs a break. We can continue this in 10 minutes. I'm just getting started. Robert, what the hell happened to Perkins? Ask that pit bull of yours. Uh, oh no, actually, I prefer a female masseuse. That, can I call you right back? Right back, okay, bye. Perkins just got wheeled out on a stretcher. Well, he couldn't handle the heat. He's probably faking it. What were you thinking starting that deposition without me? I don't know, maybe if you were doing your job. Oh no. What? It's from Geller, Perkins wasn't faking anything. Our best chance to nail Anthony Maslow is dead. I've spoken to the hospital, and the cause of death was a pulmonary embolism. There was nothing you did. Would it be okay if I took the credit? And what my client wants is for your client to not get what she wants, so you can't have the tabloid, period. You're legally required to take these offers to your client. So bring me up on ethics charges, or report me to your supervisor. Oh, wait, shit, I am your supervisor. Hold on one second. What are your complaints? Have any? No, really? Harold, I um, called you two nights ago and you didn't answer your phone, which is really funny because you're a first year associate who's lucky enough to be working here at Pearson Hardman. So when I need to get a hold of you, you will be reachable at all times. I don't care if you're in a coma, hospital that's been burning down, your mother's about to jump off the Brooklyn Bridge, you will pick up your phone. Absolutely. Got it? Yes. Okay, thanks, can you leave my office, please? How do we figure out which accounts are his? Because they're all gonna add up to the same exact amount of money that was lost from Stable Shelter's account. Well, how do you know? When the account was drained, it had to go somewhere. What goes out from Lucille's had to go into Maslow's. Simple law of mathematics. So we just have to figure out a combination of accounts that adds up to... $152,375,242.18. I'm good with numbers, too. Thank you. Is it? Yes, Champagne, sir. Is it? From the region. In France, because if it's not, it's called sparkling wine, and I don't really drink sparkling wine. Forget it. Forgive him. His parents really wanted a girl. Never got over it. Wait a minute. You could taste the difference. I'm not being a snob. Not a snob. You sound like Fraser's brother. Niles Crane was completely okay, misunderstood. Boys. I'm not being vindictive. I'm sorry. Do I have the right office? Listen to me. I want you, goddammit. And I will throw that secretary right out the window if I knew you were going to be my secretary. But I have a reputation that I value and I'm not going to be putting my reputation on the line for something that I do not believe in. American Ballet Theater? No. Followed by a one-on-one -on -one dinner with Barishnikov. Uh-huh. 
<laughs> oh, mommy. Do I smell like sausage? No more than usual. Why? Uh, because I'm about to meet the future Mrs. Lewis Lynn. I had pizza before I came, and I just want to make sure I still am not emanating any aroma. Oh, you're emanating something. It's called pheromones, and women find it irresistible. Watch. No one told you? No one told me. Oh, drats. Well, a long-standing Pearson Hardman tradition is the rookie dinner, which means you, the... Rookie. That's right. Yes. Are to host a dinner for your fellow associates. Well, come on, don't look so blue. Uh, oh, it's okay, it's really easy. All you have to do is just find a unique location and then coordinate with 50 other associates. It's really simple, no pressure. Okay. And you're allergic to chicken? No, I just don't like it. It is not about the crime now, it's about the cover-up. This says Perkins acted alone. Oh, he's the perfect scapegoat, he can't defend himself. You wanna go to the bathroom? You don't bother coming back. You're right, I should have apologized. But don't you threaten me. I follow procedure to the letter and you have no basis for a lawsuit. No, I don't, not about this. But if you don't think I have a basis for all the shit you've pulled over the years I've been here, think again. I'm sorry, okay? Lewis. Jessica seems to think a mistake's been made. I don't believe so. I also don't believe this is a matter of ethics. It's a matter of loyalty. Someone in this room has betrayed us all, and it makes me sick. The fact that it went to those holier-than-thou pricks at Wakefield Katie, you know what? That makes me sicker. Now, you all work together in the trenches, shoulder to shoulder, which means one of you must know who did this. Now, if y'all harbor knowledge of the perpetrator and do not turn him in, you're as bad as the perpetrator himself. You, along with the perpetrator, will be fired. He's doing George W. Bush. You're either with us or against us, folks. He sounds like Bush, but he looks just like Cheney. <laughs> <laughs> you got something to tell me, Harold? <clears throat> mm -mm. No? Not that dermatological problem that you were talking about earlier in my office? No? Not that one? No. The devil. Her Majesty's here to see you. I heard that. You were meant to. Gentlemen. Your Highness. Okay, you know what? That's exactly why I'm here. To be mocked? No, to set clear ground rules to keep the negotiation above board. Absolutely. No kicking, no biting, and no rabbit punches. And now you're mocking the ground rules. No, I'm just mocking you. Point one. We both agree to use the independent valuations. Absolutely. Good point. Point two. You do not call Jessica in to mediate. This is you and me. You afraid mom's gonna take my side? No, I know mom's gonna take your side. Because I'd be right. Point three, Chinese wall. You can't access any internal documents that I create. Let's make Jessica proud. We do this right, everyone walks away happy. Wonderful. Don't worry, we'll still crush. I heard that. You were meant to. Come in, come hey, in. Um, could you help me with something? I need to get this fax for Harvey and- Good morning. Good morning. He needs a- You can tell, can't you? I bet you everybody can. Uh, tell what? You wax your eyebrows? I was with the most beautiful woman last night. <laughs> uh, she waxed your eyebrows? We did a lot of things last night, and waxing wasn't one of them, if you know what I mean. Oh, God. Uh, well, that's great. I'm here to name's Charisse, about... and we have so much in common. And Mike, there was like this, there was like this, mm. Mm-mm. -mm. You know, like, 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 like a... Mm. Mm. Like a chemical thing that would happen when our bodies would touch? Mm. No, I really don't want to have this conversation with you. Well, come on, we're both guys, right? A little locker room talk around the office. I mean, that creates a little yeah, male bonding. That's crazy. I just heard my name. Uh, did you hear that? Someone's calling me. I'm going to just one second, okay? He's probably still a virgin. <laughs>